First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, and thanks for joining us in the workshop. Today I'm going to show you how I make the wooden block inserts for the 1859 Sharps rifle. Now, on the outside, a Sharps cartridge box doesn't look really any different from what everyone else is packing around out there on the battlefield. There are a few subtle differences based on the necessities of our use of them and what the rifle re required. Uh, one of the biggest differences between a Sharps cartridge box and say a, a Springfield one is we don't, the Sharps cartridge boxes don't have the uh, strap loops uh, on them, for example, because the Sharps cartridge box was designed to be worn only on the soldier's belt. The other thing is um, we got cartridge tins in our cartridge box, just like everyone else does or should. Um, but because the 1859 Sharps fired a 52 caliber um, linen uh, encased bullet, the, they needed wooden block inserts to protect the delicate nature of those linen rounds uh, before they were fired. Um, and then you would have an arsenal pack um, under here on each one and probably a few more arsenal packs in the knapsack because we were, we were loaded with bullets. Um, so in order to make these, I want to get in real quickly to actual documentation. Company D, you know, we're obsessed with documentation and if we don't have something we're looking for, we're actively searching for it. And one of the books that I refer um, viewers to uh, all the time uh, with their questions is this one. U.S. Sharpshooters, Berdan's Civil War Elite. And there's the author right there. Um, this is, you can find it. It's not probably the cheapest book, but it's kind of essential. And it answers most questions um, about Berdan sharpshooters. It has all kinds of target rifles. It goes into detail about the Colt revolving rifle we get a lot of questions about. Um, uniforms, gear, flags, um, battles, battle honors, um, you know, competitions, all, everything in here is what you're probably gonna answer your questions. So if you turn into page 64, um, the author is actually examining original Sharps cartridge boxes and their tins. And in the photos, um, those edges are flush on the tins. And according to um, this example that was examined, the two wooden blocks measure three and three eighths by one and a quarter inch by four and 11 sixteenths. And each box is bored with 10 holes. Each hole measures between 0.56 and 0.59 inches in diameters, uh, in diameter. And it is one and a half inches deep. So those are some important measurements to keep in mind. They are a guide though, um, unless you're a tinsmith and you just make it exactly the way that the original says. Um, one of the important things to do is when you go shopping for tins, if you don't already have some and you're gonna convert them, um, you wanna make sure that your tins, that this um, outer piece is as flush to the top as possible in order to get this inch and a quarter. Now, if it's not a perfect inch and a quarter, that's fine. You could work those tolerances within a few thousands, but you're kind of pushing it. And that's why one of the other most important tools you need is a drill press for your 9 16 Forstner bit. Because a point between a 0.56 and a 0.59 diameter, it's a 9 16 Now this is, this 9 16 Forstner bit is gonna be something you're most likely going to need to order. Um, not Lowe's and Home Depot and those box stores, they don't typically sell these in stock. Um, I think I got this one on Amazon for, I don't know, 12 or $15, and you'll get a lot of use out of it, especially when people know you're making wooden block inserts for the Sharps rifle. Um, and you need, you need a Forstner bit so you can have that nice, clean, flat bottom, and you have a clean cut all the way down uh, the hole. So you, don't, you wanna stay away from spade bits, a spiral bit's not gonna do it, and you need the drill press um, in order to have a perfect perpendicular hole every single time. And if you're working less than um, the original uh, thickness, every thousandth of an in inch counts. And 
you need to make sure everything's laid out. You got that drill press, you got it in a drill press vise to support it, and you drill it through. And sometimes, um, based on your tin requirements, you might blow out some of the sides of your insert, and that's fine. As long as there's some structural integrity, once it's in here, it's fine. But you may also be asking is like, hey, first sergeant, in your videos, you teach people how to make uh, reenactor rounds on a half inch dowel. Why can't I just use a more easily found half inch Forstner bit? Well, you can't. I mean, you can technically, as long as the round that you make goes immediately into the wooden block insert. Um, but once that powder and that uh, paper settle, hardly any of your rounds will ever fit into a wooden block insert. And odds are, um, if you get them in there and you're running around on the field, um, the, those rounds are gonna settle inside the blocks and odds are all you're gonna do is when you grab a round, you're just gonna pull the top of your round off and pour powder all over your cartridge box. And that's, that's no good. So uh, take a little bit extra time, get a Forstner bit. If you don't have a drill press, you know, try to find a buddy that has one. And this might be the opportunity you've been looking for to finally go and buy a drill press. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. It just has to drill a perpendicular hole consistently um, in the way that you laid out. Now, as you're looking through the Suttlers, or you know, maybe just wing it and buy it online like I did, um, you wanna find the flattest ones. But if you got what you got, no big deal. Um, you probably will need a, a soldering gun to fix, fix this if it's way off. This is, actually isn't too bad, but I have had to desolder and then re-solder these to be uh, flush with the surface. It's, it's no big deal, just a little bit of patience and it goes right back together and you can make it the way that you want. Um, it's also kind of handy to have because sometimes these wear out, rust out, and might need a repair. So uh, soldering iron is really important to have. The other thing too is you're gonna want some calipers. Um, you unfortunately, unless like I said, unless you're a tinsmith and you're making these dead on every single time, you can't batch the wooden inserts. And when I make these, I use the calipers to find the exact measurements of each tin and I transfer these caliper measurements because these, these edges are hardened and I use that to set, to cut my wood. Um, they all cut a little bit fat and run it through the power planer or take a few shavings uh, with a hand plane to get it down to where it's perfect. But this tells you, you don't even have to, this is a digital one, but even if you had a vernier, you can't read a vernier, doesn't matter. It's whatever the tin says on the distance, that's, your, that's what you mark on the wood. Piece of cake. Now for wood choice, uh, you know, I just use two by material. Um, try to pick a clear one. Um, I have some leftover two by six cutoffs, like I always do. I'll cut a clean square edge on one side and I'll go from there based on the measurements of the tin. So um, these ones are running about, oh, two and a half inches or so, give or take. And then once we get our blocks cut and fit, then we'll lay out for the holes. And there's a few tricks that I like to share with you on that one. One last thing, so you don't get any last minute surprises. Um, if you look inside of a tin, there is a fold over on, on the metal. Now, if you're working and you're trying to squeeze every last thou out of your wooden block insert, this could hang up on you. And what you may need to do is figure out this distance, maybe like a, you know, a fat eighth of an inch, and then score the edge of your block and then take a couple little passes with a block plane and notch that block a little bit so it goes in. Otherwise, you, know, you, you might, you'll get a ton of drag trying to shoehorn it in there um, and you could just scratch up and mar up your wooden block insert. So that that is something I wanted to share with you now and save you frustration down the road because I've been there. Okay, so I know in with my cartridge tins that they're gonna be pretty darn close to the original inch and a quarter thickness. So 
you can do this any number of ways. I got a thickness planer, I can do it that way. Uh, got a table saw, I'm gonna do it this way. Got a band saw, you could also take this in on a band saw. You can also just use a hand plane. So tons of different ways. And you could even use a rip, hand rip saw if you wanted to do it that way too. Um, so I measured, it's gonna be an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna set this a little bit fat and I can fine tune it with a hand plane. Um, now, if you're not comfortable ripping wood on a table saw, don't. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my blade height to maybe a little less than half. And then I'm gonna flip it in for end and just keep cutting and raising the blade until I get um, my inch and a quarter. So eyes, ears, and dust. And just like that, you should be pretty close. That's actually, <laughs> that's actually pretty good. Normally it doesn't fit perfectly the first time. So we got something to start with. Now we're just gonna cut it to length. Okay, so now we are ready to start cutting our inserts to length. Now you may be wondering, why did I rip this long board uh, down? Uh, when I'm just using a few inches for each insert. You know, maybe I'm using that much. Well, the reason is it's a heck of a lot safer to rip a long board than it is a short one. So keep that in mind. So I wanna make sure I got a nice clean square edge and then I'm gonna measure. Now we have our nice squared edge. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take our calipers, because they're handy, loosen them up, and then I'm going to find the overall length. Like I said, I'm measuring in a couple different places. So there's a there's definitely a shorter end. So I wanna go on that side. I'm gonna lock it in. I'm gonna double check. Just snug there, a little loose. So like I said, split the difference. So now I'm going to take my calipers. Let's see if I can get this into frame. So these are hardened. So all you need to do is run it on your edge and make a mark and it'll scratch. And then you can go back with a square and run that line and now now you have a cut line to work off of so let's cut this there we go save the line you can always sand down or plane a little bit and we are actually this much too long. So as you can see, I'll do it this way. It's, it's not very safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up on the belt sander. Now we have our block cut to the proper length. And I already went ahead and cut this shoulder in like I was telling you about. So on the inside of these tins, you're going to have a fold right there. And that is going to make any fit that you end up getting really tight. So all that I do is I'll start my block and I'll mark where that fold begins right there. And I'll make a pencil mark. Then I'll go back with a combination square and I'll strike a line with my marking knife making a pretty deep one and then I'll cut that shoulder uh, with just a bench chisel and that'll make it a lot easier to take in and out and you can kind of confirm uh, how well your block fits. Now for the next part you have to find the exact center. 
Um, and for that, again, you're gonna be using marking tools and not a pencil. A pencil is never gonna give you the tolerances that you need for this sort of project. So get rid of the pencil. Use a marking knife, exacto knife, box knife, something like that. And then uh, in my case, I like using a marking gauge and it has a cutter right here. And I'll kind of eyeball where the middle is. I'll run a little dimple on one side, come back on the other side. And if I'm off, I know that the center is in between those two marks that I made. I reset and I run my center line. Then you have to figure out your um, block placement, your hole placement. And for that, I use a basic pair of dividers and I get them in these little kits. You can find them at most office supply stores, craft stores. And then what you wanna do is without measuring, you just wanna pace off five equal spots. And then when you have the spacing that you want, you press down on the point and then you go back with a square. And then again, with your marking knife, you run a line on all those dimples, perpendicular. And you get your equal spacing all the way around. And then with all your squares, you just have to go and find the center of each one by making two diagonal lines. And each one's gonna be different. So do that one and that one all the way down. And then once they're all marked, take an awl or something pointy and dimple the center of that X. And that's going to help your Forstner bit track once you're ready to drill. And if you just wanna be on the safe side and double check, take your Forstner bit, give it a little spin, make sure you got clearance. And depending on your tin, it could be really tight, but hang in there. Now, uh, when I drill this, I'm not gonna cover this at that point, but right now, when you drill near the end grain, this is gonna be your highest risk for blowout. Um, the end grain isn't very strong, especially on softwoods. So just take it slow, um, do little bites at a time, don't put a ton of force, let the drill uh, bit do the work, and you'll get a pretty decent result. And even if you do have blowout, as long as you go slow and steady, it, it's not going to impact the block's ability to hold your rounds um, in the tin. So I'm going to finish marking these and I'll see you at the drill press. Now at the drill press, I wanted to point out that I have the wooden block insert uh, firmly supported in a drill press vise. Uh, this vise plays an important role in not only securing the work, but having the side supported will help resist um, any tendencies for the side walls of your holes to uh, blow or tear out. Um, the next thing we have to do is we know from documentation the uh, the depth of the insert holes were an inch and a half. So I, what I do is I just take my combination square and make a pencil line at inch and a half, and then I will set the depth stop on my drill press to an inch and a half. So that way, uh, not only do I have perpendicular holes, but they're all going to be the same depth. Now. The inch and a half holes were designed for the um, live linen rounds. Uh, if you are only gonna use this for reenacting, um, you may want to change the, the depth of your hole um, based on the size of you, what your reenactor rounds and how much powder you're running. Um, so keep that in mind, you can customize this depth based on your needs. So uh, let's get everything lined up and get drilling. There you have it. Your very first wooden block insert for your 1859 Sharps rifle. We got real lucky the first time. We had a perfect fit with the first cut. We had absolutely no blowout or tear out. Though, I think, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. You can, you can see light coming through this end grain. Um, so, but it didn't blow out, so it's safe. And once it's at home in the tin, it's good. Nothing's gonna happen to this thing. Um, 
It's really delicate though. Some of these side walls are very thin. Uh, any of the corners or end grain of this block are gonna be really delicate. So if you are determined to sand it down a little bit, I would only do it by hand, gently, and maybe 150 grit sandpaper. But normally I'll just um, call it good and send it home. Perfect fit the first time. And it's really important that if you're gonna be making more of these, obviously you have to make the matching one. Um, but if you're gonna be making more of these, it's gonna be really worth your time to get handy with that soldering gun. So um, you can fix uh, errors like this in the cartridge tin construction. So you can get at least that inch and a, inch and a quarter of the original um, uh, block insert thickness. It's going to be it's going to save you a lot of stress in the long run. Um, I have made them to fit this reduced uh, size just out of speed and necessity um, and it's it's hit and miss. You're going to have uh, a high high likelihood of blowout. Um, it may still work it just won't look as pretty. Um, as always we thank you so much for joining us in the workshop and watching our videos and subscribing and liking and all your wonderful comments. Uh, let us know if you have any questions and we'll certainly see you next time.